Hey everybody, uh, just want to do a quick video here on um, custom supports in Idea Maker. Uh, and again, so like I use uh, CR10 uh, as my 3D printer, uh, I go back and forth between you know Kira, 27, and Idea Maker. Idea Maker's been my go-to now for the last several weeks. Um, I'm really liking uh, a lot of the features and the print quality coming out of it. So um, I'm, and I don't get paid by Raise 3D or have anything any affiliation with Idea Maker other than I like using it. Uh, and so hopefully others like using it too. Um, but specifically today I want to talk about custom supports. Uh, this is a big feature in some of the pay for uh, slicers and you know comes um, free of charge here on Idea Maker. So let's let's do a couple of examples. Um, we're going to start with our little buddy uh, Benchy. Um, so we're going to load Benchy up here. And, um, and you know again Benchy is a torture test right. You're not supposed to use supports or any of that good stuff. You're just supposed to Print them out it is, is and see what happens. But for our purposes here, we're gonna we're gonna jack them up. So um, you load in your model. You have make sure you have it selected. You know you have it selected because you have your bounding box around it. If you click off, then uh, you're uh, you're basically you you turn to whatever extruder color uh, you pick here um, or your default color. So make sure you're picked. Go to supports um, and you get your little support structure uh, boxes here. And you've got the auto supports and you've got your manual supports. And again, just like so, if you're used to using Kira, you can do touching platform only. Uh, if it's unchecked, then it's going to go everywhere uh, based on your overhang degrees. Um, <clears throat> your pillar size is the, 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 the size of the pillar, the support pillar that's going to be placed. And then even if you do the auto supports, you can do manual supports and edit them. So you can add or remove to whatever's been, um, been already placed. So uh, let's do uh, first just touching build platform. And let's just do something like a normal kind of 60 degree and more. Then we're going to add supports here. So have all that set up. I'll keep it at the normal 3 millimeter uh, pillar size because bench is pretty small. In fact, uh, well, for our purposes, just for fun, I'll go to uh, create auto supports. So there we go. Just touching build plate. You can see it has added them all around the bow and the side and over here. And really just to support this... Uh, um, which is hilarious to me, but I mean, most slicers are going to do this, but really just support this little overhang for the, the portals and the lip here. Um, you know, if you've done benches, you know this is laughable. But anyway, like I said, um, demonstration purposes only. So let's go back here. Uh, let's take off touch build plate and let's do them everywhere. Let's create auto supports and watch it go ahead and throw them in everywhere. <coughs> so <coughs> great auto supports work, Mark. What's next? Uh, manual supports. So now let's say you want to um, um, let's let's clear everything, and let's say I've got a particular model. I know I'm going to have a, you know a, a radius to overhang something like that, a doorway, and I want to add a manual support. So all you have to do is do your manual support, and you get this little pillar that moves around, and all you got to do is place it where you want. Left click to place it. Uh, I'm going to stick one here in the window. There's another one. Uh, we'll do one here, and there you go. And now, if you've got one like um, it's in, if it's in like a weird spot, uh, and you try and left click, it'll kind of it'll well crap that one lets you do it, but otherwise it kind of laughs at you. Um, and I'll place one here in this back window, and I'll place one here, and I'll say oops. Yeah, okay, there you go. So it knows I'm not supporting anything and stop being stupid because it's not going to print into space. Um, but let's say I screw up and I throw in there or there. And uh, and I decide, oops, I don't really want that one. Uh, just go to the remove button and then highlight and left click and bang, it's gone. Um, so pretty easy. Uh, and now let's clear supports one more time. Let's do the auto supports. Let's do them everywhere. So it's not like one or the other you got to pick. You can actually just modify. Sorry, let's do this. You can modify what uh, what idea makers already placed. So again, right, this is a little bit excessive. So I'm just going to pick remove, and I'm going to go ahead and remove a couple of these because clearly I don't need all of them. But just left clicking, and it will remove uh, the supports that are there um, that you're highlighting. So pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> So anyway, and I, so I can tell you from a from um, you know actual experience too, in printing with supports um, in general, they are of high quality. They come off uh, really easy, 
uh, without a whole bunch of prying and messing up your print while you're pulling them off. Uh, so generally I've been real happy with the, the quality of the support removal and the, the, the prints overall coming out of Idea Maker. Uh, let's do one more example. Uh, I'm going to delete this model. I'm going to pull in a face mask that I actually just finished printing. Um, and I had to add some custom supports to it. Ooh, big. Um, so here we go. Here's the front of my CR10. So I want to print this uh, standing up and I want to use some custom supports. So I've got my model highlighted here. I'm going to hit rotate. I'm going to rotate this on the Y so it's standing up. And then I'm going to twitch it on the Z so facing forward. And I'm going to hit the support button. And again, let's just let the uh, touching build plate only uh, come into play here. I'm going to change my pillar size to 8 because I would like a little bit bigger support. And we'll let those auto generate. You can see it's got a, an okay base down here at the bottom. And it's got one big booger coming out of the nose. Um, I would probably rather uh, either have two big boogers or just one in the middle. So, um, and then also uh, we're definitely going to need something in the eyes just to get rid of some of the drooping. So we're going to add some manual supports here. And I'm going to go ahead and place a couple more uh, across the side and the cheeks just to give this a little extra support while it's printing. This, by, by the way, is, like I said, I've already done it. This was a 36-hour print um, uh, using PETG at 0.2, and, so I, and I print PETG super slow at like 30 millimeters a second. So I like um, having the, uh, the confidence that the support is there and gonna hold my model in place. Uh, while it's going. So anyway, so there we go. There's custom supports. Nice and easy. Um, just for fun, I'll add one more here. So I'm going a little excessive here. You really don't need that much, but uh, demonstration. So there you go. There's custom supports. Let's go to the start. Let's let it slice. I'm going to use my stock uh, Pet G um, mask uh, profile here. I'm going to just go to uh, edit. Um, infill shell is good. Um, we'll go over here to the support tab. Um, so normal support, uh, line support type. I'll show you what that looks like in the slicer uh, or grid. Right? I'm sure you can use your imagination. Um, I like to print my supports at the same speed as like uh, my my uh, my default print speed or even my outer shell, just to make sure you don't have sort of um, you know, loose uh, or sort of under extruded supports by printing them too fast. Um, they're there for a reason. Uh, and even though you're ripping them off and throwing them away, uh, high quality supports are always required, especially if you got a long print. Uh, so my support infill ratio, I, I bumped this up pretty high because I didn't want to have to do a bunch of finish work. So I put that up around the 40% mark. Um, and then again, in my degree overhang and all that good stuff. Uh, if you've done custom supports, like say you had six, uh, 55 or 40 over here, um, where you did your supports. When you actually go to slice it, it will take your manual support settings you've placed over here uh, and override whatever is not matching. Um, and uh, let's see what else. So your offsets, and I pretty much leave all this uh, where it is. I leave my support flow rate uh, the same. And uh, see the pillar size, I already have it eight. So it's gonna overwrite that because I put eight over here. It will make an eight. And I'll show you that when it slices. So uh, I'm not gonna go through the rest of the settings. Hopefully you've already looked at a previous video about setting this up for your CR10 or whatever printer you have. Uh, so I'm gonna hit okay, I'm gonna save and close, and I'm gonna slice. So it's gonna slice for a second. Preview window's gonna pop up here. And hit preview. This guy up. And there we go. So there are our custom supports. There's the two boogers we put down in the nose. Those are definitely eight millimeter millimeter pillars and not four, because this would be much, much smaller. Uh, and again, so I've got a, and I've noticed too, I'm not sure if this is a bug or what, but it does throw a, um, you know, a random square over here. And maybe it's because I had support there and I got rid of it. Uh, or maybe it's just uh, part of the skirt because I do have this prime in the skirt as well. But again, there's nothing there. So I don't know. It doesn't do anything. It prints it and then it goes away. Um, it doesn't do anything with it after that. So it's a little weird, but it doesn't hurt your print. So do what you need to do. Um, so anyway, let me slice this down a bit so you can see it. So you can see here in the eyes, here's how all the uh, support's going to come out.
And again, it's probably a little bit big for that uh, part of the eye cavity um, from a support perspective. But, um, but overall, like I said, the, um, the quality of the supports has really been nice. Easy to remove, holds the print in place like it's supposed to. Um, and there you go. So there's custom supports on Idea Maker. So not bad for a, um, you know, a free slicer thrown in, kind of a premium feature like that that you typically have to pay for. So anyway, hope you, uh, hope you get something out of the video. Um, have some fun. Um, thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe and uh, more videos to come soon. Thanks a lot.